line. And what happens though, a lot of times when you don't know the signs, when you don't know what's coming, we have a tendency to live our lives just kind of any old way, haphazardly, making all kinds of decisions, believing any old thing instead of what it is that we should be believing. Amen? So I'm going to speak to you today from the name of this service, uh, this sermon, this sermon called Counterfeit versus Real. Counterfeit versus Real. And we're going to find out what that's all about because counterfeit is what? It's just kind of another word for a lie. Amen? If somebody gives you something to show you it's a real thing but it's counterfeit, that's a lie. Even if that's the way it's supposed to be looking. And real is just another word for the truth. Amen? Amen? So my focus statement of the day is that all of us, we're all in searching, uh, we're all searching, we're searching for true freedom. Because what we're going to be doing is, this first sermon, this is the first sermon in, a, in about seven sermons that's talking about the steps to freedom in Christ. Freedom in Christ. What happens is that if we don't know what it is that we're doing, if we don't know what the truth is, if we're falling for the counterfeit, then we're not free. We're not free. We are enslaved to the counterfeit that's being given to us, that's being presented for us. My function statement of the day is that true freedom lies in the bosom of the Word. In the bosom of the Word. Okay, which is true. Now, freedom. What is freedom really? What is freedom really? What is it true? I mean, this country, they, they talk about, they know what freedom is. But do they really practice it? No. no, they don't, do they? I think what the problem is, is that freedom is something that, that can't just be experienced on the outside. Like being able to go and do whatever it is that you wish. That's what we think freedom is, isn't it? I mean, most of us in here, including myself, we've been locked up at one time or another. They showed up took my freedom away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They took my freedom away, told me when to eat, yeah. told me when to brush my teeth. Yeah. Well, the ones I got left, anyway. So, <laughs> told me when to do everything that I needed to do. They told me when it was. So we had no freedom at all. When you think about it, that's not true freedom anyway. Why? Because true freedom doesn't allow you to do something that inherently hurts yourself or someone else. Do you understand that? True freedom does not inherently allow you to hurt yourself or somebody else. When I say that, I'm not talking about the ability to do something to somebody, like you can go out and sock somebody in the mouth. That's going to hurt somebody, isn't it? Anybody can do that. But I'm talking about what we feel inside. Freedom inside. Now let me give you an example. Anyone can go out there in the street and they can mess with somebody other than their mate. They can be unfaithful. They can be unfaithful to their wives, their husbands, their significant other. We're free to do that anytime that we want, if we really want to do that. But if we really want to do that, are we really free? I mean, nobody can stop us. But are we really free? Can we truly go out there and do something like that without any repercussions at all? Not if you're married to my wife. Yeah, Lucy don't play that. The answer to that question, of course, is no. There is always someone out there that we will have to answer to. Whether it be ourselves, someone else, or God. Now, we answer to a higher authority, don't we? We can't do things that are blatantly wrong and simple without feeling that proverbial sting that the Holy Spirit brings to us when He is correcting us. If you don't feel that sting, then you need to check yourself. Because your conscience may have been seared, which happens when we continually ignore the prompting of the Holy Spirit. What am I talking about? What I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, and I, and I know all of you know what I'm talking about, if you're involved in a relationship with a man or woman that you ain't supposed to be with, you're doing things that you ain't got, you're sharing your body with each other, and you ain't married. If you don't, if you get up in the morning, and you're just going about your business and nothing's bothering you, 
You better check yourself. Because if you belong to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is not going to allow you to sin comfortably. Do you understand? It means if you have nothing weighing on your conscience, you need to get down, get on your knees and you better pray to the Lord. Because what's happening is that either your conscience is seared. You ever take a piece of meat, sear it over the, over the stove or something like that, makes it kind of flies it, kind of kind of burns it so that all the juices stay in. Now, we gotta be careful if we sear our conscience like that because then nothing gets seared. Okay, so you want to make sure that everything is taken care of. You want to make sure that you are saved because, ladies and gentlemen, we're right now, we're at the threshold. Things are getting ready to happen. Things are getting ready to happen, I believe, personally, in the next couple of months. Something is going to be happening that's going to be waking you up. And I want you to remember where you heard it, right here. Because Pastor Tony has been looking at the signs. I've been looking at the signs. All of the signs are there. Okay? All of the signs are there. Now, how many of you in here know that there is nothing free in this world? Only that song? Some of you think that something is free? Let me tell you something. And I know what you're thinking. That because somebody pulls up out here on the side and starts handing out the sandwiches. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you ain't got to pay nothing for it. But if you chase the some of them sandwiches, you gotta pay for it with that nasty taste. Anyway, not that I, I, I'm not trying to dog anything like that out because some of us are hungry enough to just love it to death. Amen. But nothing is free. Everything that we get, everything that we do costs something. We may not feel the cost immediately, but it is there, waiting to let me its whole weight down on you. It's just like those credit cards that we get. We go out and we find something that we like and we know that we shouldn't get it because we don't have the money to pay for it. Amen? So what do we do? We put it on that credit card. But you know what? We go home with our brand new whatever and it feels almost like we got it for nothing. Because we didn't, come up, we didn't come up with no ducks. We just put it on plastic. We put it on and we wear it a few times and we know that we are looking good, don't we? Just walking around. Yeah. Wearing it. You girls know what I'm talking about, wearing that new outfit. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. Wearing that new outfit that you got on, knowing that you're looking good. Yeah. We're silent for a little while, and then that first pill comes in. <laughs> and I don't care what anybody says, it always comes at a time when you ain't got enough money to cover everything else, amen? We don't have enough money to go around. We got this to pay. We got that to pay. And the next thing you know, we're trying to find a way to get around paying that bill so that we can have something left in the bank for us to, you know, to, to survive on. Some of us learn things like paying half the bill. Oh, Lord, no. Don't get into no habit like that. I ain't going to do it. Where's my wife? She used to do that. Lucy, I used to let Lucy pay all the bills. My mom said, baby, did you get that like to go pay? Yeah, I paid. I paid half. <laughs> well, you mean you paid half? Don't you know that you're going to have to pay that half and the whole bill next month? Don't even get into that. Please, please don't get into that. You'll be coming to say, Pastor Tony, I need to talk. I need to <laughs> I'm in trouble. Don't let that happen to you. Now, this is called living above our means when we do stuff like that. If you can't afford it, ladies and gentlemen, don't get it. You ain't going to die if you don't get it right away. Right, right. Save up your money till you have enough. And, uh, and then it'll feel much better knowing that you don't owe anybody anything more after you get it. And remember, if you don't pay it in full, it's going to cost you more because then you're going to have a culmination of interest. Okay? They're going to cut. So time is going to definitely cost you money. So when we do things that we know aren't right, we're not free. It can be our finances. It can be our behavior. It doesn't matter. We're not free. And if you're doing something and it is affecting your conscience, you're enslaved to that. 
I don't know about you, but I don't want to feel bad about what it is that I'm doing. Amen? Amen. I don't want to walk around and be convicted all the time because I did something wrong. We need to be able to keep our conscience clean. And that will keep us free. We can we can do harm with a nonchalant attitude, a spirit of unconcern. Because we know that there's gonna come a time to pay the price. So if we are truthful about it, freedom is something that we sometimes take for granted. And when we finally come to understand that we are not free from these things that we do, that are not good for us or anybody else, that we have to arrive at the conclusion that we are slaves to our own appetites. Amen? We become enslaved to money. We become enslaved into material possessions to fleshly habits. So true freedom comes. And Christ came to purchase that freedom for you. Yes. Turn your Bibles to John 8. We're going to read 31 through 36. And let's stand for the reading of the Word of God, please. The Word of God says, So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed Him, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free in Indeed. Amen. Amen. Freedom in Christ is what we're looking for. Amen? Amen? So we can see that the true freedom that we're looking for is the freedom that Christ has purchased for us. Not the kind that the Jews are talking about there. They're thinking about literal chains okay, that lock a person up, taking away his freedom from moving around, where to go, things that he can do. That's not what we're talking about here. There is a freedom that Jesus is talking about that only He can give us. Yeah, it is a freedom from ourselves. A freedom that sets us free from those proverbial credit cards and that, that, we, that we were talking about earlier. A freedom that sets us free from doing things that we know are no good for us or anyone else. So how do we get this freedom that Jesus is talking about? It is by believing the truth that He has provided for us in His written Word. In His written Word. Have you ever thought about the power of a lie? Let me tell you something. And some of you might know what I'm talking about. Back in the days when I was out there getting high and doing all my thing, you know, I'd come up to some people and I would sit there and I would watch with my own two eyes somebody do something that was underhand. And I would say to them, Hey man, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Is that? And they would look at me straight face and go, I didn't. And yeah, I didn't do that. And do you know that I found myself questioning what I saw? They lied right in my face. And I thought to myself, Am I crazy? Didn't I see what I saw? The lie can be very powerful unless Christ sets you free. There are things that He gives us that makes us be able to see these things and make the right call. Amen? One of the problems that God's people have is that we don't believe what the Bible says. We read it and say that we believe it, but we don't put it into action. Let me give you an example. We just discussed the power of the lie. A lie has the power to destroy a person, doesn't it? If we say the right words to a person, it has the possibility to travel around to everyone that you know. And before you know it, your reputation is destroyed. Everybody you know thinks the worst about you. Did you know that the more you run around and try to defend yourself, the guiltier you look? 
That's why the servant of God, he doesn't try to defend himself when a lie when lies are told about him. He understands that the lies are coming from the enemy. And although they're escaping from the lips of people that you know and thought were your friends, they don't realize that they're being used by Satan. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that these kinds of things they happen in the church a lot? Everybody that's out there, and let me tell you something, I'm in a, I'm in a very vulnerable position because I have to make decisions sometimes. Sometimes the decisions that I make have to do to do. Okay? If you're a person that's in leadership in this church, you cannot engage in sinful behavior and expect to still come up here and represent the church. I will not allow that. And sometimes I have to sit you down and tell you that you can't do it. And I'm going to tell you something. That has caused people to go out there and call Pastor Tony everything but a ton of the guy. I've had people call me things and I'm out there going, okay, I recognize that one. I recognize that one. What is that one? I ain't never even heard that one before. I've been calling things that you wouldn't believe. But you know what? It just comes with the territory. And I'll tell you something. I would rather you talk bad about me than for Jesus. Jesus knows that this church, this church, stands for righteousness. Amen? That's the way that we operate here. And that's why I continually try to help you guys live your lives in righteousness. You don't have much time. If you're living your life in such a way that's going to cause you a problem, get it straight now. If you're doing something that you ain't supposed to do, just look at him and tell him, I'm sorry, I can't do it no more. I need to walk with Jesus. Don't let that drag you down. Because I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus shows up, and I say this pretty much every week, I'll guarantee he's going to show up when you least expect. He's going to come and he's going to show up when your hand is in the cookie jar. You know what I'm saying? He's going to catch you right then and there. And when Satan, let me tell you something. When Satan gets involved with this stuff like this and he tries to damage the reputation of one of his children, especially those that are innocent through lies, that's when God gets involved. And that is why we need to believe what God has promised. Let me tell you something. When things like that begin to happen to me, I don't begin to, I don't, I don't try to defend myself. I don't try to defend myself. I just stand back and let you say whatever it is that you want because you know who defends me? God defends me. And there hasn't been one time that anybody's opened their mouths and lied about me. That what happens is it's like, you ever have one of those Fourth of July firecrackers and you light it and it just fizzles out and never explodes? That's what it's like. It just never rains any ground. It never happens. And any of you, if you've been here any amount of time, you know what I'm talking about. You might even have heard some of the lies. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their vindication is from me declares the Lord. Do you know what he's saying then? What he's saying is that if somebody lies on you, if somebody talks a bunch of stuff about you, it isn't going to work because God is taking all the power, all this thing out of you. And then, on top of that, you are going to be the one that stands in judgment over that individual when the time comes. God is the one who brings that vindication to you. And I'm going to tell you something. When you see God working that way, there's nothing better in the world because He's the one that's vindicating you. And I have sat there. And when he's vindicated me, I just... And, and, and you don't want to be one of these people that, that goes like this. See, I told you. I told you. No, no, no. You humbly accept it. Don't say a word. Because the Holy Spirit is doing that to them anyway. Amen? The Holy Spirit is making sure that they understand that what they did was wrong. And that God has vindicated you in the process. So we don't have to defend ourselves. God defends us. We just need to give it to the Lord and let Him take care of it. You know, Jeff Thomas, who was the pastor here before me, he was the previous pastor, he said something to me that once, it's been always stuck with me and I'll never forget it. He said, Tony, people are going to talk about you. Just don't let any of them be true. If somebody has something to say that's bad, just make sure that it's not there. Amen? Amen. So then it didn't put what that did. That means you ain't got to worry about nothing. 
The same thing that he told me that I want to tell you that right now. The people are going to talk about you. Just don't let them know be true. Make sure that you can stand up and in your own conscience. And as you pray to the Lord, you can tell me, Lord, you know I didn't do this. That is what our responsibility is. We need to always walk integrity. Because when we walk integrity and we are innocent, this promise from God in Isaiah moves into action for you. He doesn't even let it touch you. The lie comes to nothing. It fizzles out. It's like it loses all momentum and has no power at all. That is the power of God and it is marvelous to watch it. Now, another example of how we disbelieve the Word of God. We disbelieve when we sin. We, we, we are saying when we go out there and we sin, what we're saying is that well, what He said is going to happen ain't going to happen to me. Don't you believe in what the Word says? You need to believe what the Word of God tells you so that you can make sure that you're okay. When we sin, and all of us do, don't we believe in what God says in 1 John 1 9? He says in 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, He is made to just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all our righteousness. We say we do, we say we believe it. But how many of you have been plagued with thoughts of guilt over what you've done after you prayed that forget for that forgiveness? You walk around, I remember the things that I did. I did some terrible things before when I was in the world. You know, robbing folks and shooting them and all that kind of stuff. Just part of the thing. But I remember when I came to Christ. I was standing there one day and I was like, just so convicted. The Holy Spirit was convicting me of my sin. And I was like, man, I gotta do something about this. And I asked for forgiveness before. But when you ask for forgiveness, according to John 1 John 1 9, it's a prayer between you and God. Now, if you believe what the Word of God says, you can let that go. Because you know God is forgiven. But if something continually plagues you, even after you've asked for forgiveness, the next thing you have to do, there's another scripture in James that tells us that what we need to do is confess that sin to one another. Okay, because then what you've done is you've taken that sin and it is no longer in the dark. You've confessed it to somebody else, another person, and now that sin that you committed is in the light. People can see it. And when it's in the light, there's no more, Satan loses his power so you can no longer bring that conviction upon you. Do you understand how that works? So if you continue to feel guilty about something that you did, bring it and confess it to somebody. And you can come and confess it to me because I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to help you. And when you bring it to the light, Satan loses all of the power. So, we need to recognize the counterfeit or the lie versus the real or the truth. Truth is not something that you get from inside yourself. We don't know what truth is. Why? Because the enemy lies to us constantly. Remember, when we talked about the power of the lie, Satan uses it as much as he can to deceive us. Truth is not found in us. It is found in the Word of God. That's the reason why we need to go to the Bible when there's not emotions lying to us. We have our own feelings and emotions about certain things. But what is true? What is right? What is real? And all the only time, the only way that you're going to get that is you need to go find out what the Word of God says about it and then align yourself with that truth. Truth is not found in us, it is found in the Word of God. That is where we find our truth. When God has forgiven us for our sins. So why do we listen to that voice that whispers in our ears? You know what you need to do. Look what you did. You call yourself a priest. See how that voice works with you? That voice can work on you, can't it? And it'll keep on saying it until you believe it. So don't believe that. The Word of God tells you the truth. If you confess your sin, He is faithful and just to forgive you your sin and 
your life, all our lives. So ladies and gentlemen, you know, I want you to know, you know we're in a war, don't you? We are in a war. Just because we don't have bombs blowing up all around us, doesn't mean that we're not in a war. We need to understand that this battle is not won by military might. We are not fighting for land or for wealth. The battle is for the control of your mind. The mind is the control center of all we think and do. If you notice, there's something that we go do that we don't think about first. Every sin that I've ever committed, I've thought about it. I've thought about it. I looked at her and I said, Yeah, girl. There was no pastor, but I wasn't the pastor. Thing. There I went. But I wanted to get high. Even when I relapsed, I saw it on the earth. My wife would even take it. I even spent time spending money getting ready. It always crossed our minds first. The battle is for the control of your mind. Remember that. The mind is the control center. If Satan can get control of that, then he has got you. That's why it's so important to know where you get your truth from. So that you don't settle for the counterfeit. The counterfeit leads you to bondage. The truth leads you to freedom in Christ. What we choose to believe determines the results in resolving our personal and our spiritual conflicts. The truth of it all is that the finished work of Jesus Christ and the presence of God in our lives is the only way that we can overcome the deception that Satan has laid out here as trap. He's laid them out there for traps for us. And we, each one of us, we find ourselves, if you're not walking with God, you constantly are falling in it. When we put our faith in the written word of God and believe what it says, then we maneuver around the landmines that Satan has sent out there for us. Listen, you guys know what I'm talking about. You'll get up and you'll leave out of here today and you'll think, man, I feel much better. I feel spiritually strong. You'll be walking down the sidewalk. Just like this. Man, I feel so spiritually. I feel so spiritually. Those are the traps. Those are the traps the enemy has laid out there for you. And you want to know something about Satan? He knows exactly what you like. He knows just what kind of woman you like. Amen? Amen. So you got to watch out for her. we got to believe in what the Word of God says. We need to be able to maneuver around those landmines that Satan has set out there for us. We've got to stop stepping on them and triggering the thing that drags us into slavery that Jesus paid the price to free us from. And in this slavery, ladies and gentlemen, you men know what I'm talking about. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at my wife and I told my wife, you know, other than my, my natural desire for my wife, you know, all that other stuff, it's, it's a trap that, that you fall into that brings you into bondage. Because how many of you have been in relationship and that man that you love yourself? I can't, I can't stand to leave you. Because it feels so right. How many of you men ran into that girl and you can't stop doing what you're doing? Because it can't be wrong. Because it feels so right. If love is Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's the way that it is. You gotta remember the freedom that Christ paid for us for is part of our inheritance. It belongs to you. But you have to go and get it. You have to fight for it. You have to fight for it because Satan doesn't want you to have it. And he is trying his best to take it from you. So, my brothers and sisters, are you going to let Satan take your inheritance from you? I bet if that inheritance was money or property, you wouldn't let it happen, would you? If somebody had a house waiting for you, they left it to you in the will, you ain't going to let nobody run in there and just jump in front and say, I got this. Take it from you. If they left bank accounts to you, 
If you don't let somebody just step up there and just, ah, I'll sign for it. That's your money. That's something that's been left to you. It's an inheritance. And that's what God has left to you. You have an inheritance in Christ. Yes. This is more important than any house that was ever left to you. It's more important than any bank account that were left to you. This inheritance is the key to all of the things that you will acquire in life on this side of this world and on the other side. And that key is the truth that God has revealed to you in His Word. All you have to do is believe it and act upon it. So remember, my beloved brothers and sisters, it is a battle over the control of your mind, and it is up to you to choose what you will believe. Is it the counterfeit or the real? My name is Anthony Stallworth, and I'm a senior pastor at Central City Community Church in the Nazarene. We're located at 419 East 6th Street, downtown Los Angeles, on the corner of 6th and San Pedro. We are a church that serves the Skid Row community, so I'm sure that you can imagine that it's difficult for us to support our ministry with the tithes and the offerings. If today's message has helped you, perhaps you would like to come alongside Central City and prayerfully consider helping support this ministry by sending your tax-deductible gift to Central City Community Church. P.O. Box 13273, Los Angeles, California, 9003.